Hello there. Today I'm going to look at this year's winners of the pre-pictured photographic competition. There's value in looking closely at why certain images win competitions. Of course, judges have their own biases, so all competition judging is subjective. Also, various styles are more in vogue at various times, so great essays shot in out-of-fashion styles can sometimes miss out. We are definitely going through a very femininely orientated stage at the moment, so during the past decade, a lot of the work that wins competitions is created in a style that, let's say, is soft and muted. This competition is a big deal for photographers who are working in the sustainability and environmental arenas. Over 3,000 photographers were nominated for the competition and the winner received $109,000. If one has work that fits the theme for this competition, then whichever country you live in, you can find out who's been given nomination status and contact them directly and I also saw that you could contact the competition secretariat directly. This year's theme is called Human. During the 10 years that the competition has been active, they've had themes like water, space, fire and growth. This year's winner is Gora Gill and she was selected from a shortlist of 12 photographers. I'll take a closer look at some of the essays that were shortlisted and discuss what stands out for me and what I think the photographers have done right. They say that the camera never lies, but it can stretch the... Firstly, when you're entering a competition, read the requirements carefully. It's often costly and a real hassle to enter competitions, so only enter your work when it fits the theme requirements and also when you feel that you've done the best work that you can. Apart from money and time, there's always an emotional cost in taking part. Unless one is going to have a machine gun approach to competitions, there's always hope attached to this enterprise. So make sure that you have realistic expectations. If you have too much emotional attachment to the outcome, then it will be detrimental to your photographic process. I partly came into photography because of my father. His camera was always around and he took a lot of photographs. When I was in art school and we had the possibility to study photography, the space was very kind of encouraging and free-spirited. I fell in love with it and have been doing it for 30 years. Remember the theme is human. And let's take a look at Gori's essay called Notes from the Desert. She took a month sabbatical from work and looked at schools in rural Rajasthan in India. She illustrates what it's like for kids to live in this harsh environment. But I'm interested really in, in people who inhabit the peripheries and who often live in very precarious and difficult circumstances and who are still able to prevail, to find ways to rise above their circumstances with great ingenuity and joy and humor. Firstly, the theme of the essay perfectly fits the requirements of the competition. And it also highlights the broader aims of the organization, sustainability and environment. But to win a competition like this, it isn't enough just to get those details right. You have to photograph your subject matter in a manner that's original, and the style of the essay needs to remain consistent throughout. I am arguing that it is about the individual at the smallest level, and every story at that level is important. Gil hasn't tried to do anything funky. They are conventionally graded monochrome images. But when you look at the whole essay, you get a sense that she's captured well-observed moments that are gentle and compassionate. Every one of them has something going for it. They have visual interest and a complexity that sparks questions and communicates a story. I can't see any low points in this selection. 
she's varying her framing so you don't get the same repetitive pattern. I'll now go on to a few of the shortlisted essays. This one by Ragnar Axelsson is called Where the World is Melting. He follows Arctic hunters within the landscape that is changing rapidly due to global warming. The images are powerful, but if you pull back and analyze what he's doing, there's more emphasis on the environment than there is on humans, and this might have worked against him. He says that he's worked with the hunters for over 40 years, so I doubt that the harsh conditions would have been too much of a challenge for him. But he's created frames that are standalone artworks. Even though the subject matter is sad and depressing, the beauty is what hits you. He's chosen moments in which the subjects are displaying interesting gestures and movements. And this is really important to sustain the energy of the piece. If the vibrancy is lost, then viewer's enthusiasm starts to drop off. Alessandro Cinque's essay is called Peru, a toxic state. He's looking at how unchecked mining has impacted on the environment and local communities. If you look at the work of the life picture essay photographers, Eugene Smith was the king of the picture story. Already at that stage, he was attempting to make every image tell a story and also become a work of art within itself. There's no space for fillers. The most important shift since then in producing picture essays is that there's no longer a need to have the images read like a movie script. They don't have to chronologically illustrate a theme. The overall mood is of equal importance to the information that you are trying to communicate. Cinque's images are printed very darkly, which adds to the somber mood, and it suggests distress and ill health. Michal Luzak's extraction looks at the impact of coal mining in southern Poland, where he was born and raised. His images reveal his connection with the structures and spaces that he's photographing. They are darkly subdued by the coal that blankets everything and everyone that lives there. He's used the contrast of light and snow against the dark rock really well, and his textures make his images really come alive. Even though there are few humans in his images, they radiate a feeling of oppression and make the viewers think about the emotional and physical impact that this environment has on those living there. I'm really not sure why these two diptych essays made it into the final 12. It's a concept that became popular around 2010, and we've seen literally hundreds of photo books that repeat pretty much the same idea. The approach involves pairing images that have subtle or not so subtle links. The connection is sometimes between shapes, colors, or textures, and at other times it requires the viewers to decipher a more complex consistency. Diptychs are always pleasant to look at because it gives you a slight lift when you see the link, but I feel that if you're going to use this technique, it can't just be more of the same. Sean Davey made this essay called Garden. 
She's taken a very simple idea of how family and friends occupy the spaces within a garden. But she's made very intimate and personal portraits of her subjects. It would be impossible for an outsider to replicate these interactions. You can feel the connection between the photographer and the sitter and she uses light and colour simply but very effectively. The subjects are fully aware of Davy's presence but they relax within the space that she creates. This is the last series that I'll look at and it's probably my favorite. If you've seen my earlier video on Vanessa Winship's She Dances on Jackson, you'll realize that I hold her in high regard. This essay is called Sweet Nothings, Schoolgirls from the Borderlands of East Anatolia. That's in Turkey. She uses a large format camera, film, and has a stripped-down aesthetic. She obviously chooses her backgrounds carefully, but she allows them to blur, so her detailed subjects dominate the frame. Beyond her technical ability, you could say that she's just taking straight portraits and so what. But she manages to capture her subjects with such intensity that it's hard to pull away from their gaze. One becomes drawn into their lives and their souls. I was thinking how I'd describe what she does and initially I was going to bypass my responsibility by saying something like she has a unique touch. But then the question becomes what defines having a unique touch? This is where I think photography holds the possibility for communicating the depth of engagement of the photographer. Her superpower is being able to bypass all of the practical aspects involved in making photographs and allow us the viewers to experience the clarity of her engagement with her subjects within that moment. Thanks for joining me. Please like and subscribe and I'll see you next time.